Guys, we all know this, okay? We all know that there's about 17 too many retellings of the story of Cinderella. Many filmmakers have tried and failed <laughs> to retell this story, and you know, I feel for them. It's gotta be tough. It has to be so difficult to have the weight of the Cinderella legacy on your shoulders as you create yet another modern retelling. It's just been done so many times. How does one possibly make a, such a story their own? You know, how do you get creative with a tale so iconic? What elements of modern day culture could you add to the story to make it more relevant, you know, to, to youngsters today? Well, the answer in this case seems to be um, a Zune, a bro with an amulet, uh, Jane Lynch as a washed up pop singer, a uh, Velcro shrimp, and my personal favorite, a rap about back acne. Cause you got acne on your back. Guys, you're not hallucinating. Okay, you saw that correctly. There is a rap about backne, a backne rap in today's flick, which is another Cinderella story starring Selena Gomez. Someone on the internet described another Cinderella story as a direct to DVD sequel to 2004's A Cinderella Story. It's not a, it's absolutely not a sequel. It's like a, I don't even know what you would call it, a cousin. Not all of you will remember this, but we actually covered A Cinderella Story a few years ago with Hilary Duff and <laughs> We thought the Hillary Duff one was bad, okay? This one makes the Hillary Duff one look like an Oscar-winning cinematic masterpiece, even with Chad Michael Murray's facial expressions. If you are, I'll kick your butt. <laughs> Chad Michael Murray and his facial expressions had nothing on the male love interest of this story. That's crazy and not true. This is the most poorly paced, awkward, lazy, weird version of Cinderella that I've ever seen. And that's saying a lot because I'm pretty sure I've seen them all besides the newest one with James Corden, which I'm boycotting specifically because of this clip. Let's get loud. Don't do that. Let me give you the gist here, the, the, the synopsis, if you will. Mary lives with her evil stepmom slash stepsisters and slaves for them. At the high school masquerade ball, she gets to dance with her pop idol, Joey Parker. Running home before midnight, she drops her Zune. Joey tries to find the girl who fits the Zune. Yeah, it's the age old tale, but worse. And I cannot wait to get into it with you today, so. Put on your $18 prom dress from TJ Maxx and let's talk about another Cinderella story. <laughs> but first a word from Jay's sponsor. Well kids, it's the worst time of year again. The swelteringly boiling lava hot muggy and buggy time that we call summer. I'm exaggerating of course, I know most people like summer but not all of us, okay? But that's why I love today's sponsor, HelloFresh, because HelloFresh makes my summer a little bit easier. HelloFresh takes all the work out of eating well, you know? There's no meal prep in those little Chinese food looking containers that you always accidentally throw away even though you bought them at Walmart and they're expensive. Instead, with HelloFresh, you can get farm to table fresh ingredients with every order and it's delivered right to your door. Everything is pre-portioned, so there's really no measuring, prepping, deciding, oh my gosh. That is the kicker for me, is we don't have to sit there and think and waste time deciding what to have for dinner. No matter what your lifestyle is, you can find a delicious recipe or 40 on the HelloFresh website. They have pescatarian, vegetarian options. You could even swap proteins if you like it. And of course, this is kind of a no brainer, but if you get a recipe and you have even less time than what it gives you, or you're on a specific diet, you can alter the recipe in your own kitchen. For example, we made this prosciutto wrapped chicken the other night with green beans and it was supposed to have mashed potatoes with it, which sounded really good, but I skipped them. I was in a super big pinch for time. Also, I'm watching my carbs. So you can save the taters for later. Later taters. Oh my God. Why has no one ever told me about prosciutto? Probably my favorite one yet. Whatever you want to do to customize it, HelloFresh gives you the option. Also very exciting is that HelloFresh makes it extremely easy and simple to entertain. They got some crowd pleasers on there, guys. They got a bratwurst bar with caramelized onions, Dijonet slaw, pineapple relish, or uh, what is it, the snack board with like pretzel, there's pretzels, pretzel bites. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You can become the most popular person in your neighborhood. Your neighbors will be hopping the fence to get to your backyard just to get a taste. <laughs> That sounded weird. Hi ho neighbor, what are you cooking? So if you are interested in being the big man on campus in your neighborhood, saving some time this summer and having delicious, healthy and fresh food, you can visit hellofresh.com and use code jamiesaid16 at checkout. Make sure you spell my name right, which will provide you up to 16 free meals plus free shipping. Again, the code is jamiesaid16 because Jamie said it's amazing for up to 16 free meals plus free shipping. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for being such a big supporter of this channel, to sponsoring a portion of today's video. And now back to Cinderella. Hey kids, we're back. So this movie opens with 
a freaking sweet music video starring Selena Gomez for a song. I'm assuming it's called Tell Me Something I Don't Know. Tell me something I don't know. So right off the bat, I'm thinking right on, dude. Selena Gomez is playing herself in this movie. She's playing a pop star. But alas, it was but a dream, but a daydream. Man. Can I be an artist? No, unfortunately, kids, Selena Gomez does not play the pop star in this movie, but instead, Jane Lynch plays the pop star. I'm on hold for you. Feels like a fever dream. Okay, so Jane Lynch's character's name is Dominique, and like I said, she's a famous pop star. Selena Gomez, uh, whose character's name is Mary, I believe, is Dominique's adopted slave. I mean, daughter. Oh, it's a tragic story. Her mother was one of my dancers, but then she died. But I needed some help around the house, so I took her little brat in. So Mary works for her adopted mom, Dominique. She fetches her drinks, helps out with her video shoots, cleans her house, does all the cooking, vacuums her driveway, etc. All the typical things that servants do. All the while, Dominique is extremely mean and domineering. I hate your energy. It's ugly and sad and lonely. Yeah, the whole the whole arc of Jane Lynch's character is quite quite strange in my opinion. Like she's supposed to be evil. She's an evil diva, pop star, meanie, but she's Jane Lynch, so it's funny. But the script is so weird that it makes it almost not funny. Be a cute little cuddle and shake that money makeup before I'm brown bread, eh? I have no idea what you are saying. That was, see, that was it. That was, that was the whole joke of that part. It feels weird, right? So Mary is going to fetch Dominique a bubbly water. Agua con buble, comprende? And we get to meet the rest of her adopted family, which are these two super evil sisters. What's with the attitude? Anybody recognize this sister? As in it's Eunice from She's the Man. I'm gonna be the best lab partner you ever had. She was pretty funny as Eunice, but I gotta say this movie shows much more of her range as an actor. I love to dance and sing, yeah! Just you wait. So then we get the pleasure of watching Dominique create this uh, commercial, I guess, it, or like an infomercial for some back knee medication. You know, when they used to shoot my music videos, they had to digitally remove my entire back. <laughs> that was actually very funny. Not since I've been using Baby Got Back Knee Vanishing Cream. And see, I personally feel like the joke could have ended right there, but instead they just kind of kept going with it for a while. There ends up being an entire uh, back knee rap. But, but, baby got back knee. You know, I want to say that this is overkill, like they did too much, but that would also be coming from the person who wrote, recorded, and produced an entire music video for a song about Flamin' Hot Cheetos. What am I to during COVID, so, so who am I to talk? You know, we, we can all have our fun. So later on at home, Mary and her sisters are watching the news and they find out that this famous pop star teen heartthrob guy named Joey Parker will be taking a year off of his like music career and spending it at school, which just so happens to be their school. You know, get back to my roots, you know? I'm taking my senior year off, going back to school. I'm just trying to keep it real. What are the odds? We also find out in this news clip that Joey Parker and his team are hosting some sort of big dance competition and whoever wins that one lucky student will uh, get a chance to dance with Joey Parker in his next music video. Very exciting news. Cut short by Dominique. Can you feel that? What? I'm joking you. From a distance. Joking you! Huh? Joking you! All right, guys, are you ready for the artistic best friend slash supporting character who drives a unique van and makes her own clothes and is quirky and is not like other girls introduction? because it's happening. Meet Tammy. Hey, do you think my leather goes with my tutu? With an eye. So Tammy and Mary, <laughs> I'm just realizing that these character names sound like 50 year olds. <laughs> kind of like Paul and Terry from Raise Your Voice. So Tammy and Mary get to school where we meet and you guys are gonna be shocked by this, so brace yourselves. The cool popular kids that don't like them. <laughs> Actually, really, nobody seems to like them at their school. Halloween was in October, too, too. Yeah, I can see, like, why nobody likes these girls. I think it's because they're both cute, skinny, intelligent, creative, fun girls with beautiful hair and perfect skin. You know, all the things, all the traits that make you a loser in a movie. I actually, I think that was code for your butt rules, which it totally does. What? Your butt rules? Your butt rules. Your butt rules many sentences in this movie will be the first time you've ever heard that sentence <laughs> the next day so suddenly all of the girls go absolutely wild because the one the only joey parker it's joey parker 
has arrived to school. Along with his friend slash sidekick, who was also in Taking Five, I never thought I would see this guy again, but here we are. Ew. His name in this movie, I believe, is Dustin. I'm Dustin. But he goes by the funk. People call me the funk. And I don't know why I just told you that. <laughs> So long story long, everybody just starts losing their actual minds, okay? There's paparazzi. The girls love him. The guys love him. People are puking. It's thrilling. Is it just me or does every like tween movie that we review on this channel have some sort of weird, dramatic, non-realistic puke scene? Stop it. So guys, it's time for dance rehearsal. And dance rehearsal is my all time favorite part of this movie. So the dance team meets after school like most dance teams do. And they have this little room that just so happens to have a two way mirror in it. So there's three possibilities here. A, this building used to be like a police station where crime suspects would be interrogated. B, this is a common thing that happens in dance team rehearsal rooms. Or C, uh, there's a creepy janitor lurking around, probably wearing a belly shirt. You were all thinking it, I'm just saying it. So I guess Mary is like not allowed to be on the dance team. They don't ever explain why. I'm assuming it's because Dominique would not allow her to. But if that were the case, why wouldn't she just like lie about where she was? I don't know, but irregardless. So she has to sneak into the other room, like the room on the other side of the two-way mirror. And she has to dance by herself secretly while watching the other students who think that they're looking in a mirror. Yes. This makes sense. So this day, the day in question, Joey shows up to rehearsal, just what are the odds? And according to the dance teacher, Joey is there to teach them, okay? Teach them. So I thought you might like to learn some moves from the man who made them famous. So naturally they all immediately know all the choreography that he's there to teach. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> Killing it, man. So this whole scene just absolutely killed me because it starts to get real serious and really epic when Joey and Mary start dancing at each other. Because we know Mary's there, right? We're privy to that information as the audience, but Joey doesn't know that Mary's behind the two-way mirror. So he's basically just doing all this very serious, intense, romantic stuff to himself. Why would any girl be into this? If I saw Nick doing this, I would just be concerned. So after they finish this pretty incredible dance that they all know perfectly, Mary's cell phone rings. Okay, that was a weird noise. So it turns out it's Dominique on the phone and Dominique's like, um, hello, where are you? We're hosting a luncheon today. You're supposed to be serving crab puffs, blah, 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 blah. And I was so hoping that someone on the other side of the two-way mirror would like hear, hear what was happening, hear Mary's cell phone. I thought Joey was gonna be like, is someone there? This was a perfect setup. You know, they could have shown like a few more rehearsals of Joey just being unable to shake this feeling that his true love might be behind that glass. And then at the end, they could have revealed it to him and he could have been like, man, it was you. It was you that whole time behind that glass, behind the mirror. But they don't, uh, this never comes back. <laughs> There's never again a two-way mirror dance rehearsal and I'm upset. So this luncheon that Mary is late for is <laughs> so weird. So Dominique actually invited Joey and his whole team over to her house for a luncheon because she wants to try to convince him to do a song with her. It's a duet. I guess maybe she thinks like collaborating with a young relevant pop star will kind of help relaunch her career, help her regain some relevance. But <laughs> Joey is straight up just like, uh, nope, not gonna do that. Don't like you. Not sure why I'm here and why are you serving me raw carrots and tomatoes? I'm not doing a duet with you. Five more minutes and I'm out. So yeah, not going well at all. Gets even worse when Mary comes in to serve the cold shrimp and everybody keeps like almost knocking her tray out of her hand. Hope nothing bad happens. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Selena Gomez really said, I will give you one take. You don't like how I literally threw the tray before Joey even stood up? Too bad. Time is money. We keep meeting like this. You, uh, yeah, shrimp in your hair. <laughs> Hold on, did she just go ahead and eat that chunk of lettuce that fell on her face? 
She did. She she ate it. I mean, she may as well, right? There's no need for it to go to waste. Like these shrimp Velcroed onto everyone's clothes. You will clean this room. She's literally standing upright and the shrimp will not fall off. Side note, are those jumbo shrimp? I think they are, which means I have to take a break because I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually allergic to oxymorons. <laughs> And and regular morons, not just the oxy ones. So we will be right back. Don't touch that dial. Hey kids, we're back. And it's time for the masquerade ball that I forgot to tell you was happening. The school is having a dance, you know, a masquerade ball where people wear masks. And of course, because this is a Cinderella story, Dominique will not allow Mary to go. She makes her stay home and clean her bedroom. Oh, and clean up these fish sticks. They've been there since Lent. So I was assuming that this would be the part where, you know, the fairy godmother shows up and they actually kind of make you think it's gonna happen, but it turns out to be a dog. We've been looking for you since Christmas, boy. How is he still alive? But actually there is no fairy godmother in this version of the age old tale. Instead, it's Tammy with an eye and a crew of a bunch of grown men. A cleaning crew, that is, of a bunch of men. Hi. Yes, Tammy knows a cleaning crew. They are her sister's, sister's boyfriend's, boyfriend's cousin's, cousin's, cousins. cousins. No mess, too messy. This mess is too messy. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what you want me to say, okay? This is the script. I don't have any control over it. So Tammy and Mary go to the dance, and of course nobody recognizes each other, just like the Hillary Duff one. You guys know how it is. You can't recognize your friends when they have this much of their face covered. So Mary and Joey like start talking. And by talking, I mean uh, like yelling. They're yelling at each other. What was that? I don't usually come to these things. Yeah, me too. And I guess this is a bit nitpicky, but it kind of seems like maybe the editor should have brought the room noise up a little bit, like the background chatter room noise. And I wish they had made it sound like it was really loud in there, but it was just ever so slightly off. So it just kind of sounds like Mary and Joey are unnecessarily <laughs> yelling at each other. Wait, oh, you, don't, you don't like the dance? Sorry, what? Uh, do you wanna, um, can I ask you to, to dance? What? So Mary goes and gives her iPod to the DJ, asks him to play the specific song. He plays it. Uh, it's kind of like got a Latin-y vibe, you know? Kind of salsa-y. Thank you, baby. And she goes to dance with Joey, who of course, again, immediately knows all of the highly choreographed moves. The dance floor clears. It's so romantic. It's going super well until... Man, I hate when that happens, you know? It, it seems like every prom has two big random bowls of beads that the popular girls dump and make the losery girls fall on their butt. Tss, butts. Was that female protagonist fall compilation worthy? I'll let editing me decide. What do you think, editing me? No, I don't wanna edit anymore. I, I wanna go home. My hands are tied. So after she falls on her butt, uh, Joey reveals himself. Joey? She had no idea it was him, obviously. When suddenly the clock strikes midnight, which means Dominique is on her way home, so Mary has to hightail it out of there, but she drops her iPod. So the original story was a glass slipper, Hillary Duff's version, she dropped a non-working cell phone, and Selena Gomez drops an iPod. Wait! Or no, it's a Zune! Zune. <gasps> it's a Zune. Remember Zunes? <laughs> My cousin Erica had one back in the day, and. And that's, that's the end of that story. So it is a race to get home in time. The cleaner guys are hurrying up, finishing brushing the wigs. Mary barely makes it inside without being seen, but then ushers all the cleaning guys back upstairs and just tells them to go that way. Go that way, that way, that way. Where does that way lead? We saw the whole room earlier. There's no exit over there. God, I'm so tired. Where were they? Just standing there. I just picture them all standing in a corner perfectly still with like lampshades on their heads like, don't move. Maybe she won't see us. <laughs> so the next day at school, I guess their prom was on a school night. <laughs> Joey gets on the intercom to announce. If you were the girl that I danced with last night, tell me the names of the four most listened to songs on your playlist. So as the tale goes, obviously all of the girls in the school are lined up to claim the Zune. That is clearly not their Zune. And a lot of the girls don't even try. Like this one gothic girl is straight up like asking Joey for hints. <laughs> 
Are they emo? So while all these girls are busy trying to convince Joey that they are the one, the evil sisters end up overhearing Mary talking about how it's actually her that's the one. So Eunice ends up, or no, what's her character name in this movie? Brit. So Brit ends up sneaking onto Mary's laptop, finding the names of the songs and presenting them to Joey. I'm the one. So she lists off the top most listened to songs on the playlist. We all fall down, she wants to move. Ponder replay and hips don't lie. Hips don't lie, <laughs> for real. I don't know why I thought they were gonna be some like hipster, deep, obscure, not like other girls songs, but I was wrong. So I guess kudos to the creators of this movie for the curveball. Anyway, Joey isn't buying it because obviously this is not the girl he danced with. So she decides she's gonna prove it to him by doing it. Just watch. <laughs> How do you guys feel? How do you guys feel about yourselves right now watching this? Feel good? Feel, feel like this is a good use of your time? Personally, I feel like this is not my finest hour. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the ketchup and mustard colored clothing or like the violent spasming she's doing or the whole weirdly sensual vibe of the performance, but either way, I am disappointed in us for watching it. You are one pathetic loser. So later on, or like later that weekend, I don't know how much time passed, but it cuts to this party Dominique is hosting at their house where she herself is performing for her guests. <laughs> I'm assuming the filmmaker's choice to use a singer that sounds 30 years younger than Jane Lynch was deliberate. So Dustin, you know, the funk, he shows up to the party and he recognizes Tammy's hair from the masquerade ball. So he asks her like, hey, is your friend, the mystery girl, is she here at this party? Tammy of course says yes, so Dustin's like, okay, can you go get her? I'm gonna call Joey Parker, we have to hook them up. He calls up Joey who is waiting outside the house for some reason. <laughs> I guess he was waiting to see if he should come in, freezing to death. You can see everybody his breath in this movie. Just as a side note, I never thought I would see more breath than I saw in You're Baking Me Crazy, but I think this movie has more breath. But anyway, just like that, the whole mystery was solved. There was no real buildup. It was very anticlimactic. It was just Dustin being like, hey, is your friend here? She says, yes. There it is. They didn't develop it. Like a Cinderella story with Hilary Duff was so much better. There was this huge buildup before he finally realized that it was Sam, you know? So Mary goes up to Joey, ready to confess her love and reveal herself and offer him a crab cake. Crab cake? But just as she is about to say the words, her evil sisters start playing an embarrassing VHS tape from Mary's childhood. <laughs> And she is of course extremely humiliated because in the video she's gushing over how much she loves Joey and she says embarrassing stuff like that he's kissable <laughs> and does a weird chicken dance. <laughs> oh, exactly what I was thinking, dude. <laughs> bok bok, am I right? <laughs> Need some ice for that burn? Bok bok. So she runs away crying. She's a good crier, by the way. <laughs> But I guess while she's sitting there, she has a change of heart. She's like, you know what? Screw my ugly stepsisters and their beautiful bean footage. I'm gonna prove to Joey that I am mystery girl. So she rips off her worker smock to reveal a very beautiful 2004 looking dress. She grabs her boom box, goes outside to the pool area and plays the song that they played the night that they danced at the masquerade ball. Just, you know, to lure him out, kind of like a Kind of like a mating call. Not as good as the Boone County, West Virginia mating call. I get it, baby. But a mating call nonetheless. So Joey somehow hears the song over the very loud party, and thankfully he's the only one who hears it, and he goes out to marry like, You're the one. I've been going crazy looking for you. I couldn't stop thinking about you. Sorry, Joey, I gotta stop you right there. I, I can't focus on anything you're saying because I'm so distracted by all the breath. I actually found you. This is amazing. Who said anything about charity? I couldn't stop thinking. It's cold, huh? You know, guys, it's not just the breath. I just feel like overall the whole scene was not romantic at all, at least not as romantic as it could have been. I feel like it could have been a little more like this. Wow, you're the one. I actually found you, this is amazing. Oh, <coughs> God, dude, did you eat farts for lunch? And on that note, we have to take another short break. And when we come back, Mary vacuums the driveway. Don't miss it. 
Yes, you has an audition for the Manhattan Academy of Performing Arts. Me, that's you. Yes, yeah, so Mary got a very exciting audition to get into some like performing arts academy. And Joey lovingly offers to help show her some moves. For your audition, I can help you practice. I might be into that. Well, you might be into that. <sighs> Please tell me when the flirting is over, it's too painful. But meanwhile, scandal alert. This lady from the academy calls like to schedule Mary's audition, but Dominique answers the phone and lies and tells her that Mary broke every bone in her body or something. She broke both her legs. I just can't help but compare Jane Lynch's character in this movie to Jennifer Coolidge's character in A Cinderella Story. Cause it's like, they're kind of playing a similar character. They're both funny. They both eat weird. You get it. From my. Meanwhile, unfortunately, Mary is not gonna be able to practice her moves for the audition with Joey because Dominique left her an insanely long list of chores to do while she's gone for the weekend. So Joey comes up with the most brilliant idea in cinematic history, which is to dance out the chores. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Did you think the main character of Footloose dancing out his anger was the pinnacle of like weird dance scenes in a movie? You were wrong. This guy in Selena Gomez dancing while vacuuming a driveway is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> One, two, uh, yep, so uh-huh, oh yeah, whoa. excuse me, whoa, uh, just like that. I like when they both do it together. Just like that. As if, as if she's gonna take, as if she's gonna take that move into her audition. <laughs> oh snap, we got Windex moves. We got some fancy footwork. I really like when they both wear Dominique's shoes. It's giving, um, it's giving that meme. The meme that's like, as a kid, when your mom asks you to bring the groceries in, <laughs> never fails. So after the vacuum dancing, Joey uh, tries to show Mary a beautiful song that he wrote. It's going well, but he asks if Mary can help him with some harmonies. Why does he assume she can sing when literally nothing about her character has even hinted at that thus far? We'll never know, but here we are, they're singing. It's the way you make me feel like I'm finding something real. Okay, am I crazy or is that a little bit off key? Just, just barely, just a little, a little sharp. I do it all the time. Break time's over. Back to resting. Yeah, break time's over, back to resting. <laughs> Wait, what? So the evil sisters are obviously crazy jealous of this blossoming romance and all the vacuum dancing. So once again, they try to sabotage everything. So they send Mary this like fake bouquet of roses with a little note that says, meet me on my patio at midnight or something. And she's all excited, but when she shows up, they have the mean girl, Natalia, sitting on the edge of Joey's bed. He's clearly, he's clearly like half asleep. What? It's pretty obvious that she woke him up, but Mary doesn't really investigate. She just runs away crying. And I guess it took her the entire night, like as in probably seven or eight hours to run back home because she doesn't get back home till the next morning. Huh? What's her problem? So they get to school and Mary dumps him. And he of course has no idea why, right? He, he doesn't know that she saw Natalia sitting on the edge of his bed <gasps> and all seems lost. You know what really sucks about falling for a guy you know you're not right for? No. Do tell. You fall anyway because you think he might turn out to toy with me until someone better came along and I wouldn't mind because I was lucky a big star wanted. Oh, all right, enough, you broken record, okay? That was the longest answer ever. Poor Selena, man. They made her say all this goofy stuff, swallow rice chunks and make weird noises. <gasps> it's not Selena's fault, you know? So again, guys, all seems lost, okay? Mary is crushed. She lost her boy. Dominique ruined her chances at getting into that school. Joey's devastated too. He doesn't even know what he did wrong, but thankfully Dustin is there, you know, to over explain the situation. Wait a second, hold on. So Mary was there when Natalia broke into your house? You're telling me her evil sisters sent her a bouquet of roses with a note that says meet me on the patio at midnight, but when she got there she saw Natalia sitting on the edge of your bed and immediately assumed you were cheating even though you weren't actually officially dating in the first place? So Joey comes up with a plan to right all of these wrongs. Get Mary to come to the competition, alright? I'll handle it from there. So I'm thinking to myself, fat chance, right? Mary's definitely not gonna wanna come, <laughs> nor would it even be possible if she wanted to because Dominique's not gonna let her, right? So her friends are gonna have to do some serious convincing to get her to go to the competition. Please get dressed, something nice. It'll be worth it. Okay. Or it will be incredibly easy and take no convincing at all. Either way, either way is good. Either way, well, either way. All right, kids. Climax time. It is time for the competition. It's a SETI set, complete with a fog machine. It's incredible. Joey's on stage, 
doing his thing, his pop star thing. So this is a competition to see who's gonna get to dance with Joey in his next music video. So there's a lot of dancers auditioning. There is break dancers, there's hip hop dancers. Is that the guy who puked from earlier? The stepsisters, the stepsisters audition, they do pretty good. You guys aren't gonna believe me, but I actually did not add those sound effects. <laughs> So Joey gets up on stage to perform in his own competition and lo and behold, it's that song, you know, from earlier, the one that they harmonized off key to. Way you make me feel. It's all just coming full squiggly circle. So Joey wants to ask Mary to come on stage and perform with him, but he can't find her in the crowd. Mary, you out there? Mary, you here? Mary, come on. I know you're out there, come on. Oh my God, where did she go? The mystery, it's its building. The suspense is killing me. Hey, Mary. Oh, she's literally right there. <laughs> is that weird or am I weird? So they have this weirdly mean, like back and forth banter in front of everybody. And Mary ends up going up on stage to dance with him, I guess out of spite, out of anger. Meanwhile, Dominique is still trying to make this whole thing about her. <laughs> So they end up having like this dance off. It is cringe, but it just nothing will ever compare to the Britney versus Justin dance off and Britney Ever After. So there's no point in even showing it, I guess, except for this one part where Selena Gomez's mouth doesn't match what she's saying. Give me something with some edge. Oh, and this other part where Selena Gomez suddenly turns into some other lady. Wait a damn minute. I like the lady in the audience from the Academy who's just observing the whole thing like, gee dang it, that stunt double has moves. Anyway, they dance off for a really long time. I was waiting for the vacuum dance move, but it never came. You're the new classic. You guys couldn't find a dancer that was like the same height as Selena Gomez. Actually, more importantly, why couldn't Selena Gomez just film this part herself? <laughs> She's just standing there. <laughs> So then Selena starts singing again. Cringe, but cute. I like Selena. I like Selena Gomez. And I think this guy who played Joey uh, has a pretty good voice. I actually read somewhere that he was the voice actor who did the singing for Zac Efron's character in High School Musical. Don't be afraid to shoot the outside, Jay. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, it's a fun fact. And watch us while we do that. Hey, good job. Hey, thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, is it just me or did they make Selena Gomez hold this like uncomfortable arched back pose for a weirdly long time? So Mary is looking at the audience and suddenly she locks eyes with Natalia, which triggers her memory to remember that Natalia sat on the edge of Joey's bed. So she gets super upset, runs away. <laughs> Who's that guy? So Joey runs over to her to apologize. I believe you. Cool, that was easy. So then the winner of the competition gets announced and you'll never guess who it is. Oh my God, Mary Santiago! <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry all you dancers who probably prepared for this for months. I'm gonna go with my girlfriend who I invited on stage at the last second. <laughs> And just when you guys thought that it could not possibly get any happily ever after, the lady from the Manhattan Academy comes up and straight up, right then and there, offers Mary a full scholarship. Full scholarship. <laughs> she straight up gets to skip the whole applying and audition process. Full scholarship. Joke's on you, Dominique. <laughs> oh. Oh. That was like identical to the Feel the Beat scene. Anyone? Feel the Beat, anyone? <laughs> So friends, the movie ends with Joey and Mary getting all makey-outy. Mary goes off to the Manhattan Academy. Everybody's happy. And Dominique ends up in a wheelchair. And Dominique ends up in a wheelchair. And Dominique ends up in a wheelchair. <laughs> yikes. I'm feeling abandoned. Double yikes. Does anybody else feel like the pace of this movie was so off? I don't know if you can tell because the pace of my video <laughs> is probably a little bit less off than this movie, but shouldn't she have been revealed as a mystery girl at the very end? They they solved the mystery so early, like halfway through the movie. So the rest of the entire movie was just filler content. I don't know, man, not my fave. No offense to Selena Gomez. Again, it's not her fault. It's not Drew Seeley's fault. And it is certainly 
not Jane Lynch's fault, who, like Jennifer Coolidge, can really do no wrong in my eyes. Well. I wasn't going to read reviews this time around, but there was one that I actually thought was relevant and a little bit alarming. It was in the one star section of the IMDb reviews, and it says, I can't get past the fact that at filming, Selena Gomez was 15 and the love interest in this movie was 25 in real life. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Uh, gross. So that is it, kids. I gotta go. Gotta go dance with my vacuum. Be sure to hang out with me on my other social accounts for other content. Let me know what movie you want to see next down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out! Man, this dance is super lame, huh? What was that? Oh, wait. I just said this dance is super lame. I, I kind of want to leave. Yeah, me too! Dude. Why are you yelling? It is not that loud in here. Wait, oh, you don't you don't like to dance? No, I do like to dance. Will you keep your voice down? It's kind of getting weird. Can I ask you to to dance? No, you can't because you keep yelling. What? Why am I yelling now? Ah! Really weird. Okay, it looks like there's a fork in that pickle jar. I don't feel like you need to dip your grubby little hands in the pickle liquid. Why is Joey the same age on the cover of the Tiger Beat magazine when Mary is like six years younger in this little like VHS tape? <laughs> With these arrows of love, somebody gonna fall hard tonight. I guess Dustin and Tammy can hear each other way better than Joey and Mary, even though they're at the same dance, because again, Joey and Mary are yelling. You don't like the dance? And Dustin and Tammy are like talking completely normal. <laughs> I bet that liquid is a really gross color. Mm hmm It's my electrolytes, okay? It's not poop. It's not just the breath, it's all... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know if I have enough footage. Could you just like... You know, As a blooper? Vegas! <laughs>